song says his arms are open wide that you can boldly come into the throne of grace in your time of need today that he's not mad at you and he's not disappointed with you he loves you with an everlasting love I don't know what condition you're in today where you're at but I want to tell you something your best days are ahead of you your best days are ahead of you. It might not seem like it. It might seem like, wow, these are, these are tough times. You know what happens? You go through tough times, you go through tough times, tough times, tough times, tough times. Tough, tough. You just feel like, oh my gosh, tough times, tough times, tough times. Oh my gosh, tough times, tough times. Breath of God. All of a sudden, he just turns it around. Come on, he just breathes on it, and all of a sudden, things turn around. It's so powerful. was reading, you know, there's a time to cry and there's a time to be mad and there's a time to go to war. There's a time to heal and there's a time to have peace and there's a time to rest. There's all kinds of times and seasons for everything, but I've never read where there's a time to quit. Let, let me say it to you. There's no time to quit. It's time to get up and it's time to go on and run your race. Look, when they came to Jesus and when they came to Peter and, uh, and John and Mary said, look, the, we went, I went to the tomb. It's empty. He's risen. They ran to the tomb. They ran. This is no time to leisurely, casually stroll through life. This is a time to get going and run your race and run it with an anticipation of victory. 
because you are in Christ and in Him is victory. Amen. So I want you, I want you to let this be your service of get back up and go. You got everybody agreeing with you. It's good to come into the house of God because you got every, you got the whole body in unity and agreement that everything's going to be all right for you. Would you just turn to the person next to you and say, everything's going to be all right. It's going to turn around for you. Now, come on, let's just give Jesus one more shout of praise. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Good to be in the house of God. I want you just to hug and high five those you're around. Just love on them for a second. They need to be healed. They need to know you love them. Come on, let's take two minutes out. Get to know somebody. Get to know their name. Impact their lives. Don't just sit down. Get to know somebody. Right when I say that, everyone starts sitting down. Okay. That's cool. How you, how you doing? I'm doing great, bro. You look really good today. Great. I like the great, pants. Man. I, I like, like the cart. No, that's not cardigan. It's nice, though. I like the little, like, arrowhead. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. It's very you. Navajo. He notices details. You got any, yeah, any. You got to know the flex. It always helps. Details. Amen. Guys, welcome today home. Welcome to church today. Welcome to In His Presence. My name is Israel. My name is Prince. And we want to give everybody a special welcome today. But first and foremost, we want to give our first-time guests a special welcome, an awesome welcome. Can we give it up for our first-time guests today? For our first-time guests, if it's your first time here, we want you guys to feel at home. We want you guys to feel special. We have an awesome gift for you today. We have a mug, so you can put tea in there, any coffee. Any, I know some of you guys are saying something about like ice cream, which is like weird. Um, because you don't drink ice cream in a mug, you drink it in a bowl. It's not true. But Anybody about portions? You know, if you, if you just take the whole thing, whoo! But no, we have that mug. It's a blessing. Prince, you're awesome, bro. Look at him modeling for me. And then we have a message. This part, yeah. A message from our pastor. It's a CD you can just pop in your car in the uh, disc player. And it's just a, such an encouraging word our pastor want to give you guys. So if you guys want this, just raise your hand if it's your first time today. Awesome. There you go. We have a, we got two hands there. All the way in the back. Anyone over here on the side? Okay. So Prince, help them out today. How can they get this, bro? With your hand raised, uh, we have ushers coming around, and they're handing you a perforated piece that has some basic information we need you guys to fill out. Just a simple name, your cell phone number, um, your driver's license number, your uh, social security number. No, bro. What's we asking for? Scratch the last two. Yeah, that was a joke. Uh, just very basic information. We want to know, um, you know, how'd you guys hear about the church? Yeah. People are out there sharing the love of Jesus and inviting people to in his presence. That's what we're about, right? So uh, can we give another round of applause for those who are first time? Amen. You guys are getting this around. I also want to give the instruction. Um, once you fill this out, you're going to take it to our guest welcome in the front. There's going to be beautiful, lovely, smiling faces there to give you a hug and welcome you to In His Presence Church again. So again, one more round of applause Come for on, those give it up for them today, guys. coming for the first time. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Amen, amen. Welcome, church. Welcome. Right, didn't they do a great job? Uh, I have the honor to do the uh, tithes and offerings today. Uh, I shared a message on Wednesday, and I believe it's going to bless you guys. I want to talk about giving and tithing. Please don't shut it up. Don't shut me up. Don't go off on, on autopilot right now, okay? Take over the controls. But um, tithing and giving, man, it's a foundation of your faith. It's a foundational principle of your faith. When you think about the foundation of a building or of a house, amen, it's one of the most important, if not the most important aspect of that building, amen? amen. If you have a faulty foundation then the house is going, or the, the building, the structure is going to experience damage eventually, right? And that, that foundation, amen, makes sure that everything else that's built stays in place. You know, it doesn't matter how beautiful it looks on top. If that foundation isn't good, amen, then the rest of the house suffers. Well, uh, the part of the foundation of your faith is giving because it teaches you not to be hindered by what you see. Amen. The question I was asking is, what is the opposite or maybe an enemy of your faith? Can anybody tell me? Fear, right? Maybe doubt. What I'm trying to tell you is that your sight, there you go. <laughs> I see you. Sight, right? What does the scripture say? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen, right? What else does 2 Corinthians 5, 7 say? It says, for we walk by faith, not by 
It's not by sight, precisely. So let's just say, for example, you make $4,000 a month, all right, and your expenses are maybe 32, 33, 34, 35, 3600, right? Your tithe is $400. So to your sight, it doesn't look like you can tithe. Am I right? But guess what? There's going to be situations that arise in your life that your sight doesn't say that you have the victory. Your sight doesn't say that you'll be healed. Your sight doesn't say that you're going to win the court battle. Your sight doesn't say that you'll be successful, that you'll get the job. That's why it's important to begin with giving. Because giving teaches you that no matter what the world shows you, no matter what you are seeing, amen, you have a God that's bigger than your circumstances and bigger than your situation. Am I making sense? Listen, I know, I, I know that, that like worldwide, the, the population that tithes is very low. I, I hope that I'm moving somebody from a non-tither to a tither today. I pray that the Spirit of God is moving on your heart and giving you the confidence in him to believe that what he says is true. He's able to make all grace abound towards you so that you'll have all sufficiency in all things and an abundance for every good work. If you're in agreement, let's raise our envelopes. Father, in Jesus' name, I condemn and I bind fear off of your people right now. I thank you that bills are paid up. I thank you that relationships are restored. I thank you that there's promotion in your people. I thank you, God, that they're walking in faith and not by sight, God. I thank you in Jesus' mighty name, God, that credit card bills are paid, that mortgages are paid, that rents are paid, that children are in college, it's paid for, there's clothing on our backs, there's food on our table, God, and Lord, we are are walking in the abundance of the grace of God. Hallelujah. And this house will be blessed because of it, God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. That was good, man. I like it. You just amen yourself. I, you don't even care. I love that. All right, you may receive the tithes and offerings. It's wonderful to be generous. You know, God has been generous with us. We've, uh, we've been talking about generosity for the last few weeks and have, living the generous life. Have, did you enjoy Pastor Robert Morris on the screen the last couple of weeks? Wasn't he awesome? In fact, I had somebody come up and tell me, you know, Pastor, that's, that's the best preaching I've heard out of here in a month. They, uh, I felt the need to minister to that person right there. No, no. No, no, it's a, we, we loved it. It's been great. He started us out. And I want to continue the message of generosity. I want to talk about the generous love of our Father, the generous love that he's poured out. I want you to turn to John 3, 16. Yeah, I'll tell him. You know, I just feel, I just came up in my spirit that he said, my thoughts towards you are good and not evil. If you'll call to me, I'll answer you and show you great and mighty things to come. Somebody I just feel like is in prison today. You're, you're closed in on every side. And God said, if you'll call to him, if you'll live for him, if you'll put your faith in him, that he'll answer you and show you a way out. He'll show you great and mighty things to come. So that's for somebody. I don't know. Okay, John 3. Let's look at verse 14. Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so must the son of man be lifted up. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. <clears throat> For God so loved the world. Say so loved. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish, but has everlasting life. You know, he's referencing in numbers. I think it's chapter 21. I'm not positive, but I think so. He's referencing that he's, the, 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 the Israelites are being uh, punished. They have disobeyed God and been stiff-necked and rebellious, and all these scorpions have come around, and they're stinging and killing everybody. And Moses says, oh God, you've got to help us. And he said, okay, what I want you to do is I want the people to repent, and I want you to put a bronze serpent on a pole and lift it up, and every time they look at that serpent, they'll be healed. And we still have that as a medical association icon that right now. It's a pole with a bronze serpent on it. But Jesus is talking about that one day he'll be lifted up. And if we put our eyes on him, we'll be healed. He said, man, if we'll stay connected with the one who went to the cross for us, that we'll not only be healed in our physical body, but we'll be healed in our spirit and our soul in every area of our life. The dysfunctions that we grew up with from mom and dad will be healed. The problems that we have in everyday life, Jesus will heal them. Listen, his generous love purifies and his generous love overcomes and his generous love heals. And as long as we're looking at him and keep our hearts towards him, the love of God will come into your life. It's the most powerful force in the universe. And whatever needs you have, his love supplies for you. 
That's good preaching, Pastor. I mean, that's amazing. He said, if I'm lifted up. And then he said, whoever believes in me shall not perish, but have everlasting life. He says this twice. He says it in verse 15, and then he repeats it. For God so loved the world. God didn't just love us. He so loved us. It cost him everything. He gave everything. He so loved us. He was willing to give his most precious possession, which is Jesus Christ, his son. He so loved us. He gave so we would not perish, but we would have him for all of eternity. And he said, we keep our eyes on him. We'll live that kind of life. We'll live that kind of life. Aren't you glad that Christ did that for you? Listen, his generous love... His generous love heals and purifies. If his love is so amazing that it's the answer for your life, if his love is so awesome that it can heal the whole world, just think what your life would be like if the priority of your life is to know the love of Jesus Christ. If you were immersed in, the, in his love, just think of the richness of life that you would have a hold of. The world can't possibly offer you power to save the whole world, but Christ offers you the love that can save everyone. Just think what your life would look like if all of a sudden you decided, I'm going to be an instrument of that love to everyone I come in contact with. You know what happens? You can't give what you don't have. Now, I'm going to preach on the generous love of God today. And there are going to be people here who are going to say, man, I don't do that. That's not pouring out of me like pastor says it would. Because love, his love is active. His love is not just feeling. His love is active. It goes out. Jesus said, I came to seek and save those who are lost. His love goes to find places that it can heal. It seeks out places that are empty and he wants to fill them up. His love just isn't feeling. It's active and it's powerful. And if his love is in us, it cannot be contained. It will flow through us and people around us will start to live again because of just being around us because of that love. Amen. Well, that's not happening to me, Pastor. That's not happening. Yeah. God bless you. God bless you. I'm not. That's not happening to me. It's because you don't allow him to love you. You can't give what you don't have. And if you have his love, it goes. It's, it's uncontainable. Paul said, I'm pleading with you. As ambassadors for Christ, be reconciled to God. I found out that he loved me. Paul met him on the road to Damascus and now he's begging and pleading with people to come to know the living God. Can't be contained. And if it's not flowing out of us, it could be because you haven't learned how to let God love you. He loves you dearly. That you can go to him with everything. That he's the answer. Jesus didn't have your answer. He is the answer. More of him, keeping your eyes on him, healing flows. Purification, fire starts to flow. Well, I, I, I was raised up under this, and I, and, I, and, I, and I had these parents, and I had this. It don't matter. God heals. Come on, God sets free. God delivers. The love of God is the answer for everything going on in your life. There is nothing that's more powerful or can overcome it. But we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Listen, your faith will soar when you have generous love pouring in you and out of you. Your faith doesn't work unless you have the love of God. Faith works by love. When your faith is what, what Christ did for you, when you remember, I got saved. I was headed for hell. Man, Jesus came when I wanted nothing to do with him. While I was still in my sin, Christ died for me. That's what the scripture says. And then when we receive that, faith begins to soar because faith works through love. Are you here today? Well, to just give Jesus a great shout. Come on. Come on. You need to, I feel like you need to just let it go. Remember that his generous love pours out. 
pours out. Pours out. It just can't be contained. Come on, love is where, love is your jam. Giving his love is your jam. That's where you're at your best. You're not at your best being loved by God and then containing it and just living and paying your bills. Your jam is where you start to live and generously reach out to people and wrap your arms around. You're going to love that kind of life because you're born again for that kind of life. Amen. You can't try to hold on to his love and just live like you used to. Ships look all cozy and safe in a harbor, but ships weren't made for the harbor. Ships were made for the ocean. You know, if Michael Phelps came to your house, he'd sit around eating potato chips and drink a Coke, and he'd probably mess your carpet up and your couch and everything, and then he'd leave, and he'd come back the next day and visit you. He'd probably eat, up, eat you out of house and home, just be a regular guy. But you let Michael Phelps get near a pool, and a guy's got a starter pistol. He's going to turn into super Michael Phelps. Why? That's where he's at his best. That's where he belongs. That's where he's at his best. You're at your best when you're receiving the love of Jesus and you're pouring it out. It's just pouring through you. Come on, that's your jam. That's where you're at your best. That's when powerful words of knowledge and wisdom and miracles and special healings and faith, tongues and interpretation, prophecy, that's when the Spirit of God starts moving through your life and your life is enriched. So we... By the way, Friday night was so awesome with the young, youth and young adult. Man, you guys rocked this house. Amazing. It was powerful. I mean, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I mean, amazing. So we went out afterwards, and we're celebrating somebody's birthday. And this was just a time for pastors to let their hair down and have fun. You know, I don't want to tell you who the four horsemen of the revelations is. And I don't want to go over, you know, all, I don't want to answer any questions. I just want to have fun. Let's just enjoy each other. Let's tell jokes and hang out and have fun. And that's what it was. And we were having fun. We were talking. And the waiter came over and said, you know, uh, you guys want something to drink? Yeah, I'll take this, this, this. And so he goes to get our drinks, thinking nothing about it. He comes back, you know, and he gives us our drinks. He's, he goes over on this side of the table and I'm over here. And he puts the drink down. All of a sudden, Bam. God begins to just download. And I'm transfixed on this guy, and I can't take my eyes off him. And he's just going about his business, and everybody's laughing, and I'm in a whole nother world. I, I'm, I'm in another place, and God's talking to me about it. He said, man, his heart's been ripped down. His mom died and left him early, and I'm going to heal him right now. Amen. And so I'm going, oh, God, I'm just here to have a good time. I, and so I start easing my way into it, saying, okay, uh, hey, uh, what's your name, man? And he tells me his name. I said, where do you live anyway? You live around here? I said, no, I live out in Simi Valley. I go, you got a, you're married, got kids? No, I just live out there with my parents, my mom and dad. And I thought, oh, I've missed it. His mom's alive. I've missed God. Okay, I'm going to eat my eggs and hash browns then. That's what's happening. I'm just going back. And he goes, and then as I just take my attention off him, he goes, but they're my adoptive parents. My mom abandoned me when I was little and left me, and I've never seen her before. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Come on, somebody. So, so I said, listen, that's why I'm asking all these questions. I was a little nervous about getting it wrong, so I just kind of eased up on you. But God's telling me he's healing your life. He knows that your, your mom abandoned you, but he's, got, he's, he's healing you right now. He knows you've been hurt by him, blah, blah, blah. And I started minute prophesying to him. Man, the guy just thought, this is so weird that you know all this. You know, and, but like, that's my jam. That's where I'm at my best. Do you understand? That's where I'm at my best. That's when life is flowing, when we're willing to pour out this generous love that God has given to us. But you've got to let God love you. A lot of people are just still living halfway in the world. You can't live in the world after God's loved you. And, and be receiving the love of the... The Bible says if you love the world, the love of the Father's not in you. Here's what Jesus said. If you'll obey me, I'll love you and I'll manifest myself to you. If you'll love my word and obey it, my Father and I will come into your life and we will make our 
home with you. Come on, when you love the word of God and you're submitted to it, you get closer to the Lord than any other way. And when he, when he says, my response to you is that I'll grab a hold of you and it'll be like we're one together. You'll know me like no one else knows me. My response to you is that I'll pour my life into you. And if he pours his life into you, it'll start pouring through you. You can't contain it. You can't hold it back. There's nowhere for it to go. It's active. It never stays the same. It has to go through you. And all of a sudden, your celebration begins to rise. You, you go to a whole nother level. You begin to soar in life. You're not worried about anything. There's no anxiety because perfect love casts out all fear. You're not worried. You can give easily. You can tithe. You can, you can, you can help other people. Why? Because you're not afraid because his love is just, just conditioning you to be generous with your life. Amen. It is good preaching. That's all right. No, no, no. Y'all don't patronize me. No. All right, go ahead. No, no. You're made for him to be like him. Generous love is proof of your gaze. He said, if I'm lifted up and you keep your eyes on me, It'll just pour through you. There's proof of whether you're looking at Jesus or not. People are getting blessed. You haven't lifted your gaze if folk ain't being saved. That's just a crazy, foolish Christian way because it's a maze where they just want their own ways. Get out of that haze and stop faking your praise. Oh, my God. Listen, they had rap artists here Friday night. I ain't gotten over it yet. Sure. No, no, no. There's fruit in our life if our eyes are on Jesus. There's fruit in our life. His, his, the quality of Jesus Christ isn't that we just make our way through this life. We're just passing through. There's an eternity that we will be with him. And we're living out that eternity for him, not for ourselves. And our love is pouring out. Amen. Tell the person next to you, I love you. I told a story before about there was a couple that uh, they, they, they got a babysitter. They got four kids. So they got a babysitter. They went out to a, a party. And they, the party started at 7.30. And they got there about quarter to 8. And they were there 10.30, quarter to 11. And the wife comes over to the man and says, you know, it's probably time we should go. The babysitter's got to get home. And, and we, get, we need to check on the kids. We, we need to go home. And he said, okay, just 15 more minutes. So around 11 o'clock, they left the party. And uh, they're driving, and they're just talking about how much fun it was, good to see so-and-so. And, you know, they're just discussing, wow, I couldn't believe so-and-so. They look fantastic. They lose some weight. or blah, blah, blah. They're, just, they're just talking all the way home. And they get to their street, and they say, wow, there's, what is that? And it's a fire truck down their street with all the lights blaring. And they said, oh, I hope it's not uh, the Franklin's house. They just bought that house. I hope they're okay. And the closer they get, they go, that's our house. And they run and their house is engulfed in flames. And they see the babysitter out in the yard. And they run to her and say, where are the kids? And she says, I couldn't get them out. What happens? He fires into that house and runs into that house, right? Love sends him into that house. Why? He loves his children. But you see, Jesus goes into the house after everybody. He goes in after his enemies. He died for everyone. He loves everyone. We have to get to that place. And if we're receiving his love for us, we'll have love for every person we come in contact with. Amen. Jesus goes into that house after his enemies. Growing up, I guess I was nine years old. 
And uh, we had like a generational party where generations of our ancestors were there and uncles and aunts and all their friends that we would call aunt and uncle. You know how you get close to people and you just call them aunt and uncle and they're not really related to you. But And they bring their kids and all their stuff. And so there's about a hundred people there and we're having this barbecue. It's a big pool. And one of the guys that is there, his name's Frankie. And Frankie is like one of those stray guys. That I, we don't know how he got mixed up with us, but he just keeps coming and showing up to everything, you know, and all of a sudden we just felt, well, he must be related to somebody, but nobody knows how he got there, or where he came from. He just shows up all the time and he's a nice guy, but he's one of those people that maybe might not fit in with every crowd and, 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 and but, but sweet guy, but he's the type of guy we would roll our eyes at when somebody mentioned his name. Yeah, that's Frankie. Oh yeah, that's Frankie, you know. And that's what you do when you're not saved, you know, you, and, and we would use him as, you know, cliches and, you know, that's something Frankie would do or blah, 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 blah. So I'm nine years old. I don't know any better, you know, and uh, I'm hearing my parents and everybody else say things about him like that. So I'm just, I want to be, you know, one of the in crowd. So I'm saying the same kind of stuff and just, you know, just, it was awful. But so I'm there in the pool and well, there must be 25 kids in this pool. I mean, it's a big pool, but a lot of kids and they're all playing and everything and having a good time. And I've just taken on a gulp of water. I'm going down. I'm going down. Uh, there's no going under and going back up. I'm sinking and I'm trying to stay afloat and I'm going down. I'm under the water. It's going to take about 20 seconds, but I'm going to drown. I'm going to die right here. No doubt about it. And nobody sees me because there's so many kids playing around. They don't know I'm in trouble, but it didn't take long for you to die when you drown. I mean, you can happen in a split second. And I'm going under and all of a sudden there's a hand that grabs me and pulls me up out of the pool. It's Frankie. He's been watching. Nobody else has been watching. He's been watching. He dove in after me and pulled me out. And I was thinking about this story last night. I hadn't remembered it. And, oh, I'm, I, I haven't told this story in 20 years, maybe more. I was only nine. And I thought about it, but the main point wasn't that I was going to die, that I was thinking about. The main point is that I was so ashamed of the way I made fun of him and how God used him to show me his love for me. I was, and, and the gap between me and that man, even though I was making fun of him, he's the one that watched me. How many know no one ever spoke badly about him again around me? I never said another negative word about him. The love of God is so powerful. It transforms your life, it makes you a better person. It elevates your life so you can soar and you can have the richness of life. I encourage you, if you're not seeing that love pour through you, if you're able to contain it and you're just busy with your life, you're not letting God love you. You're not spending enough time with him so he can love on you. You know, when I pray, God doesn't beat me up in my prayer time. He tells me he loves me. I want to tell him about all the stuff I've done wrong. He goes, no, I've taken care of all that. Come on, let me tell you what I have for you. Here's what I want you to do. He, he's not punishing me. He's loving on me. He's encouraging, inspiring me. If there's correction that needs to be done, you can't even tell he corrects you. It just seems like love anyway. Are you here today? God loves you dearly. But we're supposed to have this love pour through us generously for everyone else. You might have people right now you're unforgiving towards. I encourage you to deal with it right now. Deal with it right now. Go to 1 John 4. Are you getting anything out of this? 1 John 4. I like 1 John. You know why? He does not mix words. They have tried to kill him, and he's found out they can't kill him. So he just says it straightforward, no loopholes. 1 John 4. Look at verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. 
I know you're looking for loopholes and exceptions and special predicaments and yeah, but you don't know them. You don't, no, 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 no. Listen, the Bible says you either fall on these scriptures and break and let God build you back up whole or they fall on you and crush you. Are you here today? Let me read it again. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. But he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. Now look, look at me, look at me. If there's not enough love flowing through, if you're not sensing that, you have a mountain in your way. You have to fall on these scriptures and say, God, that's not the quality of my life. There's something wrong. I need your help. I need you to transform the way I think, the way I see things. I need more of your love because it's not flowing through me. And you are love. I can't stand it. I can't take it anymore. You got to change me. He who does not love does not know God for God is love. In this. You know, I was thinking of, I heard about this young girl who went to spend some time over at her friend's house and, you know, they're passing around the food at dinner time and she takes the meat and then she takes the mashed potatoes and then the, the vegetables are being passed around. And I, I want to tell the story because it's the only vegetable I like. It's buttered broccoli. I don't like peas or lima beans or okra or any of that nonsense. I don't know how y'all eat that stuff. That's gross. Gag me with a spoon. So, <laughs> so, so they're passing the butter broccoli around and the mom and the woman of the house says, well, Jenny, do you like butter broccoli? She goes, oh, I love butter broccoli. And so they're passing around and it gets to Jenny and she just passes it by. And, and the woman says, I thought you said you love butter broccoli. She goes, oh, I love butter broccoli. I just don't love it enough to eat it. And I feel that's the way. We, oh, yes, I love God. Oh, yeah, I love people. But I don't love them enough to sacrifice, to give my time and efforts, to go pick them up for church, to help them through their hardships, to give them my phone number. They can call me any time to bring healing to their life. Come on. We can't fake on God. His love is active. It's not just feeling. When he was on the cross, he was obedient to the Father. He was sacrificial. He gave his life for you and I. He, was, he endured all the persecution and he was faithful to the end. We need to be faithful to the end. Our life must matter and the way it does is that love, generous love is pouring through us to other people. That's the way the Lord is. He's, he's, his, his generosity is amazing. Let's, let's read a couple more. Y'all ready for some more? I only have a few more minutes. Here we go. Verse 9. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. In other words, John is taking out all of our excuses and saying, you, you not only know this, you've seen it. You don't, not only, I've, had, I've defined it for you, but you've also seen what it looks like. In this, the love of God was manifested. We've seen it by Jesus being on the cross. We see what love looks like. That somebody will go the distance for us. That somebody won't quit on us because not everybody understands us. That somebody won't draw back, but will be faithful to what God's called them to do. Verse 10, and this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation, the full uh, sacrifice for our sins. Look at verse 11, beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Let me tell you what he's saying. This is what love looks like. This is what it looks like. It doesn't look like anything else. You can't make it what you want. It doesn't look like anything. This is what it looks like. That Jesus died on the cross and whatever need we had, he met that need. Remember, remember Mary. She walks into the place and she pours the 
the, the, the ointment, the expensive ointment, worth 300 denarii. That's a whole year's wages. She pours, pours it on his feet. I mean, I'm sure some, some missed his feet and went on the ground. And I mean, she didn't care. She's pouring on his feet. Well, Jesus has just raised Lazarus from the dead a week or two before that. And she's so thankful. She's so grateful that Jesus would take his time to come and lift up her brother. This is her brother. She loves him and God has raised him from the dead. He's also raised you and I from the dead. He's also raised you and I from the dead. We, we have to remember we've been saved. That God's done something greater in our life. See, if we don't keep our eyes gazed on him that's been lifted up for you and I, you lose that love and feeling. But we've got to make sure that we're allowing God to love us because she doesn't care what it costs. She doesn't care what people think. She's willing to give. Why? Because God's been good to her. And she's becoming faithful and thankful. Why do you keep going down that church and working so hard? You know they're taking advantage of No, they're not taking advantage. I can't serve enough after what Jesus has been to me. Oh, to welcome people into the house of God and make a place. Come on, nobody has to beg you to serve. Nobody has to beg you to give when all of a sudden your eyes are on him and what he's done for you and I. Come on. Come on, I dare you to praise him. I dare you to praise him. Oh my gosh. Oh, come on, he's so good. He's been so good to you and I. That love should be flowing through us. On the whole, you know, God's love is how much he loves us is a much safer subject than how much we love him. When, you know, when he loved me, he healed me. Raise your hand if I mention some things that God healed you and keep them up. He healed me. He delivered me. He sacrificed for me. He went the distance for me. He changed my life. He transformed my soul. Just keep your hands up. Sure, he did that for all of us, but let me tell you something. He needs none of that. His love did that for us, but he doesn't need it. How do we love him back? You can put your hands down. He needs nothing that he gave us. The only way to love him back is that if he loved us, we also ought to love others. Now, I'm not talking about just helping somebody across the street. That's not what I'm saying. That's nice. That's kind. That's good. But our heart needs to break for people. You know, a few weeks ago, I don't know, I turned all the lights off in the sanctuary, and I got my phone out, and I just turned the light on. The first thing you do in a complete darkness, if there's a light, your eyes go straight to the light. Without Jesus, people are in complete darkness. They don't have a choice. They might have a smile on their face. They might have some good things in their life, but they are living in complete darkness. And if they experience real light, somebody that really knows who they're talking about, their eyes will go to that light and they'll want to know that light. They'll follow that light. And that's the life that's in the Lord. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Nothing was made that wasn't made through him. All things that were made were made by him. And in him was light. And that light is the life of men. That light is in you and I. And they, listen, if we'll let this love pour out through us, we'll start to see people's lives be enriched and our life will be better. Your life's not going to be better when you have the love of God in you and it's not pouring out. It's not going to be rich. It's not going to be good. You'll keep going to church. You'll buy bigger Bibles. You'll, you know, you'll, 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 do, you'll do more religious stuff, but that's not the cure. The cure is, is that you let God love you and you sacrifice for other people and love them. Amen, amen, amen. There was a guy, I don't know why I'm telling so many stories. I got so many today, I don't know why. I just like to do it. There's a guy, 
He, he, you know, his, his family is just awesome. They go to church all the time. They love the Lord. They've got Jesus in their home. They don't provoke their kids. They love their kids. They, they their kids are just love God. But, but there's one boy that he's just disobedient all the time and they can't figure it out. And all the other kids are amazing. But this one, how many know there's always one? No, dude, what's wrong with you? Don't you see these? Other? So, uh, He's up in his room one day, and he's, his father's told him 50 times, don't play with the balls up in your room because I don't want you to break anything. So he's up there, and he's playing with the baseball, and he broke the window. And he starts hearing his father come up the steps. And this is back when it wasn't so politically correct, and they spanked their children. I, I don't know. My mom used to spank me. Dang. Anybody's parents ever spanked them? They put my mom in jail right now for all the times she spanked me. But it turned out all right. It's fine. So anyway... Uh, he goes up there and takes his belt off. He goes, you know, I got to punish you, right? He goes, yes. I told you not to do that. Why'd you do that? I don't know. So he hands him the belt. The father hands him the belt and he takes his shirt off and he leans over the bed. He says, I want you to hit me seven times on my back. And the boy said, I'm not going to do that. No, you're going to do it right now. No, I'm not. He starts to cry and shake. He said, I want you to hit me seven times hard. You better do it. No, I'm not. So after about two or three minutes, finally the father says, I want you to do it right now. He starts to hit him on the back. Bam, bam, seven times. And when he gets done, the father comes up and says, did you feel good about that? He goes, no. And he's crying. He's bawling his eyes out. He said, why don't you feel good? Because you didn't deserve it. Who deserved it? I did. He said, that's what I feel like. When you're doing something wrong, that's, what, that's how it makes me feel. But even greater than that, that's what Jesus did for you and I. He went to the cross and took the stripes on his own back. He didn't deserve it. You and I deserved it. But he took what he didn't deserve so those who deserved it could take what he had. And he said, the next time you think about being rebellious and turning your back on what the Lord wants you to do, being obedient, I want you to think about what Jesus has done for you. He said it turned the boy all around. He just he was just totally convicted after that all the time. When he thought about it, just the word, just the just the seeing Jesus on the cross just convicted him. Totally turned his life around. Guy became a doctor. He's just living. He's living in Boston somewhere in some big huge. But he did awesome. He turned his life around. That's what Jesus has done for you and I. If we keep our eyes on him, if we keep our eyes engaged on him. His love will pour out through us. You might not have that right now. You can get it today. You can make a decision today. I'm not living anymore halfway. I need to get along with God. I need to, I need to come to the altar like the song said. And I, I need to get with the Lord. Because I want everybody, I want a reputation that I give too much. I want a reputation that I give too much. So many people around you every day that need you to reach out. You're thinking that they just find that they have a smile on their face. They're doing well. They're talking about their kids and family. And everything. They're in total darkness if they don't know Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and life. He is the light in the life of you and I. I'm going to tell you another story. I don't know why I keep you guys got a few more minutes? Okay. Billy and Sally, they, they go to the grandma's and they're there for the summer. And you know, she lives on a farm, so the parents send them and they like to see them work. You know, we have people today that just tear their clothes like their work, like they've been on a ranch or something. <laughs> this is a real ranch where people work. And so that's another story. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, they're there, and the grandma gives Billy a slingshot when he gets there. You know, have you ever had one of those? I had one of those. I broke out five windows in three cars the first day I got it, and my dad came out and took it away from me. But but he's there, and he's trying to, he's in the woods, and he's trying to hit something. He can't hit anything. So he's coming back towards the house. He's all dejected, and he sees his grandma's pet duck, Quacky. His name's Quacky. And, and if, if the grandma walks out, this little duck just gets behind her and just walk. Cutest thing you've ever seen. He just said, let me try this again. He slings that slingshot, hits the 
hits the duck right in the head and kills it. Quacky's dead. Oh yeah. So he's so aghast and he he takes it and he tries to hide it in the wood pile underneath so nobody will see it. And he turns around and his sister's watching him. She sees everything. Doesn't say a word to him. Just looks at him and walks away. So that night, they're having dinner. And uh, the grandma says, Sally, I want you to come help me wash the dishes and clear the table. And she says, oh, no, Billy said he wanted to do that. And she looks at, she looks at him and says, remember the duck. And he says, oh, yeah, Grandma, I want to do that for you. I've just been waiting to do that all day. And so, the, so he does that. And the next morning she gets up and they're fixing breakfast. Sally, can you set the table? And she looks at Billy. He goes, no, I'll do it, Grandma. I want to set the table. I want to learn how to do this. And he sets the table. And then that, that afternoon, she's got to fold the laundry. And uh, b- listen, the grandmother didn't say anything. Hey, could I fold the laundry with you? Because Sally's got something important to do. And she keeps saying, remember the duck, remember the duck. So that night, he can't take it anymore. He comes to the grandma and he breaks down. He said, I just can't keep it in anymore. I killed your duck with the slingshot. And she says, oh, Billy, I know, I saw it. I was watching through the window. She said, but I forgave you. I just wanted to know how long you would let Sally hold you as your, her slave. And that, that's what I'm presenting to you today. God has died for sent his only son to pay for our sins. How long will you try to be perfect and live perfect for him when Jesus lived perfectly for everyone? How long will you accuse yourself and keep trying to make up for the things you did wrong when the Lord's already paid for all your sins? His arms are wide open today. He loves you with an everlasting love. He's not mad at you, nor is he disappointed with you. You no longer should live as a slave to what you do wrong. No, God is saying, come on, come to me. My arms are open. I love you. I paid for all of that already. You don't have to live like that any longer. If you're here today and you might have some good things in your life, but you know there's a place in you that only God can fill. I want you to know that's what he wants. Remember, his love seeks places to fill. He wants to come into your life. He wants to be real to you. He's not looking to have a religion with you. He wants a relationship with you. You might have felt like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what it, maybe he wants nothing to do with me. What will happen if he comes into my life? I'll tell you what will happen. He'll heal you. He'll supercharge you. He'll strengthen you. He'll fill you with his love and his compassion and his mercy. You'll start to live and soar in life because he will elevate your life to where he is. You'll be lifted up by God as he comes into your life. I want you to bow your heads and just close your eyes for a moment. You might be a Christian here today and maybe you've been living under a law and you've been harsh on yourselves and you keep trying to make up for the mistakes you did yesterday. You keep trying to make up. You need to just forgive and accept God's love for you today. You need to accept God's love for you. He's paid for that. But you don't know what I did. I know. Maybe it was horrible. Talk to him about it. Just say, I know it was terrible. I'm just coming to you and thanking you that you paid for it. And I want you to help me use me in someone else's life that I can be that for them. Tell somebody how much you love them. Or maybe you're here today and you've never really asked God to come and be real to you. You know, the Bible says that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you'll be saved. That means you believe it, but you can't just get into eternity with God by feeling and thinking. They change too much. It says you must confess it. You must get with the Lord and say, Lord, my faith is in you. I believe you died for my sins. I want you in my life. I want to know you and not just know about you. 
I want to experience this relationship with you and not just feel it from other people. Lord, come and be the Lord of my life. Take your place on the throne of my heart and forgive me. I want your love in my life. If you've never said that to the Lord, you're not saved. You can't just think and feel your way into heaven. You have to have a conversation with him. You have to believe it and you have to say it and you have to live it. So you might be here today and say, man, I need that pastor. If you're going to pray for somebody, would you pray for me? Would you pray for me? I want to make sure that I have this relationship with God. I want, it, I want it to flow in me and through me. I don't want to just think about it and have religion. I want something real here. If that's you, I'm going to pray for you. What I'm going to do is count to three. And once I count to three, I want you to slip your hand right up in the air. You just put it straight up in the air. When I, and when I see your hand, I'll say, I, I see that. And you can just put it right back down. And we're going to pray. And God's going to come into your life today. The Holy Spirit's going to enter your life. He's going to come and he'll never leave you. He will empower you. He'll never forsake you. You'll never get to run him off. He'll stay with you forever and ever. That's what's going to happen right now. So if you've never asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life, if you want to be forgiven of the lifestyle that you've been living, if you want to know him and not just know about him, I'm going to count to three right now. You just slip your hand up in the air, and then I'm going to pray for you. One, two, three. Just put it straight up. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see those hands. Keep them up. Keep them up. I see those hands. I see that hand. Come on, just keep them high. Help me, officers. I see that back there. I see these one, two, three, four over here. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up. God will minister to you while your hand's up. Those with your hands up, not everybody else. Just those with your hands up, look at me. Catch your eyes to mine. On my best day, I can't get you to lift your hand to a God you can't see. I can't do that. You're believing that heaven's real and you've never been there. Why? The living God has touched you today. And he's convinced you that he's real and that he loves you. And he'll never leave you or forsake you. I want to pray for you. Will you come right here and help me? Will you let me pray for you? Come on, you won't be the only one. Come on, if you raise your hand over here. Come on, just stand straight up and come. Just stand straight up and come. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, you won't be the only one. All of you that raise your hand, just come. Meet me right here. Come on, church, they need your help. You want to shout unto God right now? I don't know why you're not shouting. This is miraculous. Come, come, come. Come, come. If you raise your hand, come. We'll wait for you. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you. Thank you for coming. Yes, come. God bless you, man. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Come on. We'll wait for you. Come. Come, come, come. Church, come on. That's all right. Just stay right here. Just come and stand with me. Yes. I know you can receive the Lord right where you are. You can reach out in faith right now. But if God touched your life today and you raised your hand and he moved you to say, yes, God. When you're up here, when we pray, you're going to be able to share Jesus out there in a way that's powerful. Here's what I'd like you to do. I just want to give you one more opportunity. I want to ask one more time. I want to ask you one more time. Come. Come and be a part of this right now. If I just want you to lean over to the person next to you and say, I'll go with you if you want to go. I'll go with you. Do you need to go? I'll go with you. Come. And just grab their hand and bring them. You know if they need to come. Just grab their hand and bring them. I want to make sure that we don't miss one person. So powerful. Come on. Come to the altar. His love is waiting for you. Come on, this is your moment right here. Just come. Just come. God's moving. He's touching people's lives. Thank you so much. He's so amazing, so wonderful. I remember when God touched my life 35, 36 years ago. I was hungover driving on the freeway, living a hellish life, and he touched my life, and I made a commitment to him right there. I pulled over for two hours and just cried my eyes out because he loved me. 
He wasn't judging me. He wasn't mad at me. He just loved me. And man, my whole life was transformed that day. I've been living for him ever since. Didn't have to do it. Wanted to do it. Glad to do it. It's a blessing to live for God. If you're here today and God's touched your life, just come. Just come. I want to pray for you. What I want you to do is pray out loud. I want you to know all the days of your life. Remember that you prayed because you believed. I asked the Lord to come into my life, and he did that. And I believe that day, and he's never left me. I want you to hear yourself pray. So we're going to pray right now. I want you to just pray this after me. Everybody out there, I want you to join in with us. If I pray right now, will you think you missed your moment? I should be up there. Are you thinking I should be up there? I should be up there. I should be up there. I should go right now. I should be up there right now. Well, what do I do? Just stand up and come. Well, I, you know, I, I'm a little nervous. It'll be embarrassing. No, I'm embarrassed. I keep saying coming and nobody's coming. And, you know, I'm risking everything. You just stand and come right now. Will you pray with me? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on, church. Come on, church. It just takes a little moment. Awesome, awesome, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Bless you, man. Thank you so much. Anybody else? Come, come on. They're coming from the back now. Come on. Come, come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Let your love flow out of here. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, right here with me. Come on. Oh, what an awesome God we serve. God bless you. Bless you. Woo. What a generous love that God has for his people. Okay, we're really going to pray now. Everybody join with us. Say, Father, thank you. Come on. Come on, come on. Just stand right there. Yes, yes, yes. He, no, he's one of ours. <laughs> Say, Father, thank you for not giving up on me, for waiting for me, being here for me when I needed you so much. Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. I need that. I know it. I want to live for you. I've tried. I can't do it on my own. I'm not strong enough. But if you'll come, live in me. Fill me with your spirit. I want all of God in all of me. I'll have your strength, your power. I'll live for you. I receive it by faith. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Died for my sins. Rose from the dead. Ruling and reigning. He's the king of every king. He's the Lord of every Lord. He's my God, my friend, my Lord, my Savior. Thank you, Lord. I receive it by faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, somebody. Here's what I want to do. I want you to know that we've had a great service in here. The Spirit of God's in here. The anointing of God's in here. Monday's going to come around. It's going to be the same. Monday won't change, even though you're, you're changed. It's going to come with pressures. It's going to come with anxiety. It's going to come with people flipping you off on the freeway. It's going to, listen, it's going to come with all that. It's going to be the same for everybody. But I, it doesn't have to overtake you. You're changed now. The days are going to be tough. It's a jungle out there. I want you to be strong. I want you to give God a year of your life. I, listen, how many came here for the first time today? Raise your hand. First time, just think what it would be like if you were here for a year. Listen, you'll grow. You'll mature. You'll be able to live for God. You'll, your life will be enriched. But if you just go and never come back, those days are going to be hard and strong and difficult. I want you to give God your life. We'll help you grow and mature. We want to give you a free Bible today. We want to pray for you if you need prayer for anything. We have wonderful people behind you. They're going to take you to my prayer room, bring you right back out. They're going to show you how to be water baptized here.
They're going to show you how to connect with a great church and make relationships. You need people around you that can help keep you strong. So I want you to turn around and just meet your new best friend here at Inner President's Church. Can we give them a great big God bless you and a great hand? Come on, church. They need your encouragement. All right, all right. That was so good, Pops. Let's just give our pastor one more hand. That was so powerful. That was so powerful. Here, I got this for you. Whatever, right? whatever your name is, I got this. Your mic. <laughs> All right. So I just have a few announcements. Um, we could stand. We could stand. I just have a few announcements to share with you guys today. We don't have School of Leaders. We understand it is graduating season and everyone is running to make it to some type of graduated, great graduation. So we don't have School of Leaders today. It's postponed to next Sunday. Again, we don't have School of Leaders. It starts back up next Sunday. Pre-encounter is next Sunday as well and also on Wednesday. Make sure you sign up at the information center um if you speak with any leader in this place they will tell you that the pre-encounter honestly did not only change their life but it transformed them it did something completely new and started something new it's 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 intense but you have to sign up and you have to experience it for yourself and you have to just to just be there you know um youth and young adults who is here this friday wow who is here this friday Wow, okay, so every Friday, we have this amazing youth and young adult service. It was so powerful. The, pre the presence of God was in here. I mean, I honestly did not know what to expect, but God showed up and he showed out. If you know anyone, anyone that's a youth or a young adult, make sure you're inviting them. I mean, what was done here, what was birthed into this city is a movement that cannot be shaken and is going to just literally take take this entire world and it's just going to reform it and reshape it i'm telling you you don't know what what to expect when you come but make sure you invite everyone um youth and young adults we won't allow older parents in here i'm sorry i'm sorry if you're old we just we just yeah we'll have um people at the door internship starts on um june 19th okay but the last day to accept applications is June 12th. Last day for applications is June 12th. I was an intern, I'm now working here, um, and my life changed, like drastically changed. When you're serving, it's amazing. But when you're in an internship, you are shown what ministry is truly like. And that just kind of pulls you to a whole new level in your spiritual growth that I wouldn't even be able to explain. You have to experience it for yourself. Um, if you're creative, that means if you do sound, if you do lighting, if you dance, if you sing, if you rap, if you act, if you do any of these things, maybe you do stage design and you're good at that. Please make sure you email me, send me a video. I've been getting amazing videos of people just singing, singing powerful songs, powerful worship, powerful rapping. Don't stop. Keep sending those videos. Make sure that um, when you send them to, make sure that like, there's a weird format too that's not working or being able to work, but just make sure it's the right way. Just take a video with your phone and just email it to nikki.ihpchurch, right? That's pretty simple. That's pretty easy, right? All right, you guys, um, let's just lift our hands and I'll pray us out. God, I just thank you for this time. I thank you for what you did in here today. Heavenly Father, I ask that you just soften our hearts to your will. As we're out there, as we go out and we face this week on, I'm asking you, Heavenly Father, for your love to just pour out of us, Jesus. Let it pour out, Father God, and just overflow in our workplaces, overflow in our schools. Let it overflow at home in our families, Heavenly Father. I thank you, God, that you're just, you've started something new here and you're restoring relationships, Father God, and you're restoring families, Father God. I pray blessings over every son and every daughter in your house right now. I thank you that you're going before them and you're making every